Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm away, K Swedish Whiskey Girl, and today I'm here with some Irish whiskey from Lambay. So Lambay is an island located off the coast. I think it's southeast of Dublin, and it seems like a really fascinating island. It is not just home to this whiskey, it is also home to puffins. It's a sanctuary for seabirds and it also is home to a troop of wallabies. So the whiskies we're trying today is the small batch blend and their single malt. And one thing that of course is quite unique to Lambay is that they always finish their whiskey in cognac casks. And these cognac casks are from Camus Cognac in, a, in France of course. Um, as you probably know already, cognac is, I guess you could say it's like whiskey but it's made from Greek grapes but it of course has its own rules and regulations and this specific type of brandy which cognac is part of can only be from the region of cognac which is why it's called cognac it's like scotch whiskey has to be from scotland irish whiskey has to be from ireland that kind of thing and i believe i have been a little bit confused when i tried to research this so on their website it says that they do not have a distillery on the island yet but it seems that they do all the finishing on lambay so that they ship all the cognac casks to the island and then have a warehouse there where they finish their whiskey. And the small batch blend which we're going to start on is a blend of green whiskey that they've outsourced from another Irish distillery and their single malt. And both of these expressions are first matured in experiment casks and then finished in these cognac casks. And they both sit at 4% ABV. So let's start by having a look on the small batch. And both the green whiskey and the single malt is triple distilled. And I'm not entirely sure about the mash bill of the grain is, but of course the single malt's made from 100% malted barley. So let's start by having a look on the nose. It's very interesting in the way that it's different to what you would expect from another Irish whiskey or a Scotch whiskey. It has this very distinct aroma category. It goes towards being tropical. It's like wine tropical perhaps? It's like wine, white wine mixes with oak and it's definitely that kind of cognac character that comes through. But I would say if you know the cognac that would be even more quirky if you're used to, to whiskey. There's this kind of tropical oakiness. It's, it's quite difficult to explain because it's... Oakiness to me usually feels quite robust and quite... Sometimes a little bit drier and sometimes quite... Like sturdy. But this flavour is more soft because it has another flavour that... It's directly entwined with the oak but makes it seem different. I wonder if it's... It's like a banana tropicalness. Tropicalness, tropical notes that mixes with the oakiness. Yeah, like ripe banana. Hmm, I'm not sure. Actually, it's like a mixture between ripe banana and artificial banana. It's not as strong as artificial banana can be, but it has this kind of ripe banana notes uh, mixed with a little bit of that artificial that just kind of tunes it up slightly. But let's have a little taste, Slangera. It's malty in a very soft way. It also has a slight... I mean, that, that banana oakiness from the nose is definitely there on the palate as well. It's not, there's a green sweetness, a green whiskey sweetness there as well, but it mixes with something else. It makes it seem a little bit more, there's got a kind of icing sugar, ice, like vanilla ice cream notes, but it also has this kind of metallic note. So if you eat vanilla ice cream, that's like real vanilla ice cream, and then you have a spoon. When you put the spoon in your mouth, you get the mixture between the vanilla ice cream and the metal spoon. That's kind of what I'm getting. Curious. 
let's see what the single malt is like and see if we can compare them. Oh wow, this is very different. Oh, what is that? It's, it's like a, an image in my head almost, almost popped out and I'm so, so close to seeing it and then it just disappeared. This is definitely something I've noticed before. And fairly recently as well. I mean, oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> I feel like it's, I feel like it's something, oh, I know what it is now. <laughs> I was gonna say, I feel like it's skincare. It's, uh, and this is super niche, I know. I'm gonna try and explain it better afterwards. But this smells a bit like the avocado and glacial water night mask from Origins. There, there's a niche tasting note for you. Um, but it's, so that's avocado and glacial water. But to me, it smells a little bit like, like paint and artificial banana in a really, really nice way. I mean, I think the reason why I recognized this note and was like, I know what this is and I absolutely love it, is because that night mask is one of my absolute favorite because of the scent and it just makes me calm and so ready to go to bed. Yeah, I'm very happy with that's what I find, but it's that kind of, yeah, I think you could explain it like a little bit of paint and artificial banana. I feel like it's just so much punchier. Yeah, now when I go back to the small batch, it's much more green whiskey on the nose. Interesting. Well, let's have a little taste. Slangela. First approach, first impression, it says quite light and it kind of just like a wave just came over me and then when it kind of flattens out at the back, this little tiny like burst of spice came out but a very nice approachable spice it definitely has this kind of softness which of course could come from the triple distillation I don't know if that makes sense. It might just be because I know what it is, but it has something Irish about it. It's things that I find in, for example, Jameson. We tried a few different ones. So like the stout cask, we have the normal, just their entry level Jameson. And we have Cooper's Cross, and they all have this Irishness about them, which is a really lovely flavor, which I think brings out more. I know vanilla is a very popular tasting note in pretty much all whiskey that's ever touched oak. But I think Irish whiskey is more vanilla than scotch tends to be, to me anyways. But it's this creamy vanilla, so it's more like a vanilla ice cream note that I tend to find in Irish whiskies that I generally wouldn't say that I find in scotch. And I'm not entirely sure why that is, if it's the triple distillation that brings this out, if it's the pot still. But this is, of course, a single malt and not a pot still, so that wouldn't make sense. But it's that vanilla ice cream note. I do get this kind of wine-esque note as well. Like white wine that's quite fruity. But it feels... This is the thing. Generally, I tend to like whiskies less if they're very malty or too dry. I like juicy and I like really fruity. That's just my personal opinion. But this has a dryness, but because it has the vanilla ice cream notes and this, it's it's a very, very soft. It's like you've painted just one stroke of paint of artificial banana. And all of those mixes together and it has this dry sensation, a very soft dry sensation. So for example, if you eat cinnamon, it can have this kind of rough dry sensation in your mouth, but this is very soft, quite, it makes for a really interesting texture in your mouth, I would say. Yeah, 
Yeah, a little bit grassy as well. Let's go back to the first one, just to have a little comparison. There's so much green whiskey on the nose, that kind of sweetness, the freshness, the crisp notes. But also underneath, it's a little bit of that banana note. The ripe banana mixed with the artificial. Very approachable on my palette. So that kind of oakiness. The oaky banana. Hmm. And a touch of that metallic ice cream. That one feels much more approachable and much friendlier and lighter in a way after having this. This one just feels a bit more deep. So I guess if you like grain whiskies then you would want a little bit of a quirky grain whisky or something that's similar to a grain whisky, then the small batch blend might be something that will really intrigue you. And if you want to try something wonderfully weird, but still has the robustness of a nice single malt, then this single malt's very interesting. Hmm. I would of course love to hear what you think of Lambie. Have you tried any of their whiskies? Uh, do you know what's the deal with their distillery? Did they have one? Did they outsource all the outsource all? Huh? Did they outsource all their whiskey, or did they actually make their single malt themselves? Please let me know because I'm so curious to find out more about them. And of course, if you like what I'm doing here on YouTube and my other social channels, I would of course be absolutely over the moon if you consider using my affiliate links with either Master Malt, the Whiskey Exchange or the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. All the information is in the description here below as well as links to my Patreon, my Instagram, my website and of course my Teespring shop if you'd like a nice little t-shirt like this one. And of course, an absolutely massive thank you to my supporters on Patreon who keep supporting me through my whiskey journey. I'm so, so grateful that I have you guys. But as always, I hope you all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slanjava, skoala.